Hi, welcome back. In the last video, we talked about various multi-threading models like one-to-many, one-to-one and many-to-many. -many. So in this lecture, we'll discuss the threading issues that are faced in multi-threading processes. The issues like the fork and execute system calls, like the processes make a fork system call when a process creates a new process. So what are the issues faced with the threads while a fork system call is made? Then after the execution or in between the execution of a thread, the thread may be cancelled. So what are the conditions under which a, threads, a thread gets cancelled? Then the, the computer system or the operating system generates a lot of signals how these signals are handled by the threads or how the signals are handled in the multi-threaded programming. We will talk about thread pools and thread specific data. So the fork and execute system call. So we have we have talked about fork and execute system call in chapter 4 processes. So does the fork and execute system call work the same as for the processes in the threads? So there are different approaches that are chosen by various operating system for using the fork or for handling the fork and execute system call. The Unix system have chosen two versions of fork so in which one duplicates all threads and the another duplicates only one thread that invoke the fork system call. So whenever a fork system call is made the fork system call creates another process that is a child process so in unix have chosen these two versions of fork so whenever a fork system call is made one process will duplicate all the threads or the 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 process that is created will duplicate all the threads and in another version it duplicates only the thread that invoked the fork system call so usage of these two versions depends on the application, what type of application is being used. If the execute system call is made immediately after the forking, then the duplicating all threads is unnecessary. So if execute system call is made immediately after the, the, the process is created, then the duplication is not required. Duplication of the threads is not required. So it will simply replace the process and start execution. So the execution or execute system call works as the same way as it works for the process. This is how the fork and execute system calls are handled in the multi-threaded programs. Now there are different reasons for cancelling the thread. A thread cancellation is basically a task of terminating a thread before it has completed. So before any thread has completed its execution it is terminated for example if multiple threads are concurrently searching for some information in a database and one thread finds the result or returns the result then other threads are, are need to be terminated so in order to avoid searching of databases unnecessarily so what are the conditions under which these, th these thread will be terminated or how these thread will be cancelled if the required operation is done. So the thread that is to be cancelled is referred as a target thread. So how do we handle the target thread? So cancellation may occur in two scenarios, asynchronous or a deferred cancellation. In the asynchronous cancellation, one thread immediately cancels the target thread. So in case of database search, if the thread has find found the result, so that thread will cancel the target thread. So whatever threads are searching for the same information in the database will be cancelled by the thread. Whereas the deferred thread, so the target thread can periodically check whether it should be terminated or not. So the target threads that will check itself whether the target thread will continue execution or it will get terminated. So this is how the cancellation of threads is done in these two scenarios, the asynchronous cancellation and deferred cancellation. Deferred cancellation works by one thread indicating that target thread is to be cancelled. 
so a thread will check continuously whether the target thread should be cancelled or not and on the basis of that the target thread is cancelled the next issue that is to be handled with respect to the threads is signal handling a signal basically in unix is to notify a process that a particular event has occurred so there are many events that occur in the system the signal is basically a event that has occurred in the system and how this event is handled so there are different signals that are passed in the system which needs to be handled again the signals may be synchronous or asynchronous a signal is generated by a particular event so any event that triggers in the system generates a signal so the generated signal is delivered to the process and once the signal is delivered the signal is to be handled by that particular process so there are two possible handlers for the signals so the default signal handler that will take care of all the signals that is received or the default signal handler will be responsible to to handle all the signals so every signal signal has a default signal handler that is run by the kernel when handling the signal the default action may be overridden by the user defined sing signal handler function so for example when we are moving the mouse the default signal handler will do nothing just simply moving the mouse has no operation but when you click on any specific icon or double click the signal handler takes care of that whereas the user defined signal handler the user defined signal handlers are the handlers that operate on the user input so the options to handle the signals are deliver the signal to the thread to which the signal applies so the signal handler will decide what the th what the signal is and it will deliver the signal to the thread for which the signal was generated or deliver the signal to every thread in the process so the signal generated will be sent to all the threads in the process and the thread will recognize whether the signal was it for it or not then deliver the signal to certain threads in the process so the signal will be categorized that will be delivered only to the certain processes that will take care of the handling of signals or assign a specific thread to receive all the signals for the process so there will be a specific thread that will take care of all the signals that are generated by the events by various events in the in the system so the specific thread will take care of the handling of these signals and taking the action about these signals the synchronous signals the synchronous signals that are generated by the events like illegal memory access so a thread or the process may end up accessing the illegal memory division by zero so these kind of signals are delivered to the same process through which the process uh, through which the signals are generated so the threads that generate these signals are delivered to the same process whereas asynchronous signals so these are the signals generated by an event that is external to the running process like example the user presses the control c for terminating terminating the signal so these are what are the sig asynchronous signals the next is the thread pools the thread pools is basically the waiting space for the threads a thread pool is like a buffer where the threads are waiting to handle the request from the process so in the case of web server so there will be some threads that will be created by the process to handle the number of requests that are generated by the user so the advantages of having the thread pool is it will service the request faster than creating a new thread so any process that that is executing will have a thread pool by default now thread pool may be some number of threads that a process will create when it starts executing and this thread pool will be taken will take care of the requests that are generated by the by any any operation so it this this helps servicing the request faster than creating a new thread in the system it bounds the thread in the application to the size of the pool so it also bounds the thread 
in whatever application it is being created and so there is a there is a default pool size according to which the threads will be created and will be utilized for example a web server may create number of threads that will satisfy the request made by the users for accessing a web page so if any user wants to access a web page and all threads are busy then the thread the the user request has to the user has to wait till any thread becomes free and then the the thread will be thread will handle the user request so this is what is, is a thread pool so every thread has got its specific data so this data is to be again managed by the process so each thread has its own copy of data so every thread that is executing certain instructions will have its own copy of data depending on the instruction so this will be useful when a thread creation process is not in the control so that is when using a thread pool the thread specific data can be used in thread pools where the thread creation thread is not created on the request whereas it utilizes the thread that is already created by the process or the application so the thread specific data is like thread id so every thread will be identified uniquely using the thread id the stack that is used by the thread the registers used by this thread and the data associated with that particular thread so this was all about threads so in this chapter we got to know about threads what thread is how threads are implemented we talked about various models of threads we talked about the issues that are faced in using thread hope you like the video thanks for watching the video see you in the next class